Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast lesson 11-1, Fractions and Division. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Frida Kahlo. She said, I think that little by little, I'll be able to solve my problems and survive. And she may not be talking about the same type of problems that we solve in math class, but since we do like to solve problems, I thought it was a pretty fun quote. That is a painting that Frida actually painted of herself. She painted self-portraits. That's one of the things she's really famous for. And she was kind of quirky and dramatic and tragic. And so she's an interesting person. I like some of her art and some of it's a little bit, a little bit stranger than what I'm used to, but she's a really great artist. Our learning goal tonight is use models to show how fractions are related to division. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. Represent a division problem such as five divided by seven as a fraction. We know that a fraction is actually representing the division of a specific amount. We're going to draw models and number lines to represent fractions as division, and we're gonna use those models to solve real world problems. Uh, you can see the picture of Frida there with a monkey. She, she really liked them. She thought they were very nurturing and protective. Uh, you can see pictures of her. She was actually in a really bad trolley accident and just almost crushed her body and broke lots of bones and lots of damage. And she was in a body cast for three months. And so you can see her using a little hand mirror to paint her body cast. That's when she started painting because there wasn't anything else she could do. She couldn't move at all. Here is our vocabulary. We need to remember that the numerator is the number on top of the fraction. The denominator is the bottom number of the fraction. We'll be referring to this, so you need to know what we're talking about. The dividend, remember, in a division problem, when we're talking about doing division in the house, going into the house, dividing into, we're talking about the number that is being divided, the number inside the division house. The divisor is the number by which the dividend is being divided. That's the number going into the division house. And the quotient, of course, is the answer to a division problem. Here's our first example. Um, and you did this in class a little bit as an activity. Cameron has four candy bars to divide between five people. How much will each person get? And we can see that what makes this problem challenging is that if you have four whole candy bars, you can't just give one to each person. You're gonna have one person who doesn't get any. So we're going to figure this out by using a model and a number line. You can see some really fun, quirky pictures and all the dramatic different hairstyles that Frida had. So since you all divided your candy bars in class, let's see if you did it the way I do it. Here's our four candy bars. And um, I wrote the problem four candy bars divided by five people. So we're going to divide our candy bars with an easy method to make sure that each person gets an equal amount. Now, obviously, since I'm drawing this, it's going to be terrible. but. Um, if you were drawing it, it might not, well, it might be better because you're not using a bamboo tablet or maybe you're just a better artist than I am. I'm going to divide each of these candy bars into five parts because I have four candy bars. I'm going to divide them each into five parts. So one, two, three, four, five. That's not bad. That's pretty equal. And I'll divide the next candy bar into five parts. One, two, three, four, five. My candy bars kind of look like someone's been nibbling on them already, but I'm sure that's not the case. It certainly wasn't me. Okay. Oh, this one's terrible. Okay. Now that we have divided our candy bars into five parts, you can see that if you have one person, here's one guy, we're going to give him one of each candy bar. So I'm going to color this piece green and this green, and this green, I'm being very sloppy, just so you can see that he's gonna get one of each of the pieces because there's five people, so they'll each get one piece from each candy bar. And then this gal will get the next piece of each candy bar. What I'm doing is drawing a model to represent how I could divide these candy bars evenly. So, we'll try blue. Blue guy. And I wonder if I can get a yellow. 
like a yellow. Yellow gal. And maybe we need a pink. There we go. Here's our little pink person. So you can see that each of those people is going to get one of each candy bar. But when we count those amounts up, one, two, three, four, they're actually each going to get four of this amount here. So that equals four of five pieces. I could have actually put all four of these pieces in one candy bar, one, two, three, four, and then next done all of the yellows, one, two, three, four, and then done all of the blues, one, two, three, four. So I could have done it differently. I could have sorted them differently, but I think this way makes it very easy for you to see exactly how we get an even number from a kind of a difficult amount to split. I also want to clear this and show you how to do it on a number line. So let's go ahead and do that too. So I've drawn a number line to represent four fifths. And I know since I have four as the amount that's being divided, I made four sections here. There's one section, two sections, three sections, four sections. And I'm going to divide each of those sections into five parts, but I'll show you it with a green. So you can see it one, two, three, four, five. Now notice I made four marks, but I have five parts. I'm not counting the tap, the little marks. I'm counting the parts in between. One part, two part, three part, four part, and five part. And in the next section, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I could now go in and still give each person with my little smiley face colors of people and put an arrow to what each color gets and then count up how many each person gets. So you can eat, or you can even circle them like this. Oops, let's go blue. We could circle four. Oops, one, two, three, four. That's one person. Then we have four more, so let's make sure we do this. One, two, three, four. 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 So you can see that we divided four and each person got one, two, three, four pieces of the five. So here is our first practice problem. Draw a model to show how Alistair can divide four loaves of bread between six people. How much of the bread will each person get? We're gonna represent that amount using a fraction. So go ahead and try to draw a model like what I just did, either a number line or a picture. I like pictures because to me they're more real world. They look kind of more like what we're talking about, but either way is fine. Pause it and push play when you're ready to go over it. Did you write each person will get four sixths of a loaf of bread? Let's go ahead and see how we drew that model. So I rewrote the problem. Four loaves of bread divided by six right here. Four, remember this is also a symbol for division. It's a division symbol. So we read this four divided by six. So as I, my fraction really represents the perfect division symbol. Um, I've gone ahead and drawn my four loaves and I went ahead and cut them into six pieces because I'm dividing each loaf into six pieces. And now I can go ahead and make sure that each person gets one. Instead of coloring these in, I'm going to show you a different way of modeling it. Here we'll give person number one a piece of each loaf. We'll give person number two a piece of each loaf. Person number three, oops, sometimes my writing gets a little crazy. Person number four, person number five, and person number six. So how many pieces could each person get if we divided them equally? Person number one would get four pieces, person number two would get four pieces, and etc. So when you're thinking about this, you wouldn't really give them one from each loaf. You would just count one, two, three, four pieces and give them to one person. This is just a way of figuring out how many pieces each person would get and supporting this fractional answer with a model. 
Here's a number line that does the same thing. I'm gonna change my color real quickly. I took each loaf of bread, I represented each loaf by a section on the number line, and then I took that loaf and divided it into six parts. Each one is divided into six parts. And I would simply write my numbers in here. So each person got a piece of that loaf. Each person would get a piece of this loaf. And I would keep going, and then I could count how many person one gets, how many person two gets, and how many person three gets. It should be the same answer as my fraction. It's just another way of supporting my answer. If Isabella has two chocolate bars and she wants to divide them evenly between three people, how much of the chocolate will each person get? Draw a model to support your answer. Go ahead and write your fractional answer down now. Pause it and push play when you've written it down. Did you write each person will get two thirds of a chocolate bar? two divided by three. Let's see how we did that. So I went ahead and wrote the fraction there, two thirds or two chocolate bars divided by, there's that divided by symbol, three people. So here's our two chocolate bars. I went ahead and divided each chocolate bar into thirds because I'm dividing it by three. So here's this one's divided by three and this one's divided by three. I have three people, so my first person I'm going to give one of each of those three shapes. My next person, there she is. Give her one of those three pieces of chocolate. And my third person, so I can now look at this and say, this person here, got two pieces. This person got two pieces and this person got two pieces. They each got two thirds of the chocolate bar. It's time to challenge yourself. Frida's winking at you. She knows you can do this. Mr. Perkins has 16 pizzas. He needs to share them equally between 10 people. How much will each person get? Draw a model or use a number line to support your answer. This is going to be a little bit different than the other problems we worked, but I know you can do it if you take the time to draw it out. Come back tomorrow and check your answer. Finishing up. Review your learning goals. Do you understand each part of what we did today? Do you understand that a fraction actually represents the division of an amount? So it's a division problem. In your journal, write down if you're a level one, a level two, or a level three in your learning. Remember, a three means you've got it. A two means you still have some questions, and a one means you want to work in small group with me tomorrow. In your flip journal, write down one or more questions that you still have from this lesson. Yowza, you have completed lesson 11-1, Fractions and Division. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.